Welcome back to the eighth video about my electronic dual power lever throttle control electronic IP68 of course contraption. In the previous video we finished or almost finished the lever so we are making some progress. Uh, card here, link in the description. In this video we won't do any mechanical parts but we are returning to the electronics. We do have to replace yeah, <clears throat> the breadboard here with something real. Enjoy! I already talked about the layout here of our carrier board or motherboard or however you want to call it in detail in part 4. Card here, link in the description. And since you saw me making PCBs a whole lot of times before, I just went ahead and made the PCB. That's it here. If you want to know about my PCB making process in details, uh, another card here and another link in the description. It's not my best looking PCB by any means, but uh, yeah, it some respects it turned out very well. So the fine traces here between the pins, they are absolutely okay. And uh, you can even... <laughs> Read this miniature labels here for my I2C and power supply pins. Uh, remember, this is only 18 millimeters by 32 millimeters. So I will take off now my breakout boards with the Hall effect angle sensors of my breadboard and solder them in here. And yeah, I, I do that also off camera because, <clears throat> I mean, uh, soldering, quite boring. And then I'll come back to you. Okay, the sensor breakout boards are soldered to our carrier board. Uh, next step, I will have to solder on <clears throat> some cable. Yeah, from that side, of course. And here's the whole thing with a cable attached and somewhere along the line. Yeah, <clears throat> here I've written down uh, which wire is which. And at the other end, we have, of course, our old breadboard with the Arduino on it. And a uh, cable goes in with some jumpers here. Oh, we will have to test if that's still working because we are running 400 kilohertz I squared C here on 50 centimeters of uh, somewhere it's written L Y L I Y C Y cable. Um, more details on that cable in a mailbag video a card here. Link in the description. You might wonder why are we doing this right now and to be honest I should have done this in the very beginning. Uh, you remember that general drawing I showed it in the video where I also showed you the final layout for that carrier PCB. I already cutted it so link in the description. There were still some measurements in here yeah, in red color which are not absolutely defined. And now that we've made that carrier board here uh, we can actually take the measurements on the final product and know um, what are the measurements here in our complete setup. Primarily I'm talking here about the depth of that pocket in the main body we have to mill out. Remember the whole thing and this is one to one will be mounted yeah, upside down inside that pocket with the sensors centered here on the magnets. So I can now take that measurement here. So I guess I'm here pretty much at the center line of the chip and this would be of course the bottom of our hole we mill out. Uh, let's take a look at the measurement. 
that would be 11.9 millimeters. So let's say 12 millimeters. I will write down 11.9, but in the drawing I will probably go with 12 millimeters because plus minus a tenth of a millimeter here is not critical. Another important but not that critical measurement, I mean, yeah, it's critical because uh, if I get that wrong, uh, <laughs> it won't fit into the pocket. But yeah, uh, I mean, you can still file. But this here, so the length of the board and uh, yeah, how much the chips are actually here uh, elevated up the breakout boards. That's 37.3 or 4. What do you think? Let's say 37.3. Lastly, we have to consider the width of the whole thing here, the assembly. And yeah, I already adjusted my caliper here to the width and uh, some things hanging here but uh, yeah overall that's working out and that's 18.1. Now that I have the measurements of that thingy here I know how deep my pocket really has to be and uh, what size of yeah baseboard with all the breakout boards I have to fit in here. So I can finalize the measurements of that pocket. And I will show you the uh, finalized drawing etc. in a future video. I've mounted my <coughs> carrier board with the two breakout boards here in the manner they will be mounted uh, in the final product. And maybe you can, yeah, there in the back, if I zoom a little bit in, yeah, you can see that the sensor is actually centered on the magnet, uh, more or less. But yeah, that's how it will look like. So the center, the uh, main body part will have a pocket milled out and the whole thing will be screwed in this way. Now let's see if everything is still working. So I have my <laughs> throttle set up here and there's my signal cable to my little breakout board and the USB to my notebook, which runs the Arduino serial monitor. And as you might can see, uh, it works beautifully. So the left column, that should be that lever here. Of course, uh, nothing calibrated, no zero point set properly, but it measures the angle. Did I say left column? Yeah, the left column. And the uh, next column right of it, that should be the other lever. Yeah, again, uh, no zero point set, uh, direction no longer valid. Uh, this is actually an old version I'm using here. To be exact, that was the version 3 of my A1335 code, uh, yeah, uh, shown in part 4 of uh, Allegro A1335, etc, etc. The details, part 4, card here, link in the description. That's it for today. And yeah, my <clears throat> Lego prototype, especially if I put <laughs> the aluminium palm handles on, looks more and more like a, a real thing and no longer a toy. Anyway, I guess in the next part we will tackle the side pieces that contain all the friction mechanic and uh, of course our shafts to where we can attach our levers and handles or two. Till then, bye.